Okay. Well, thanks again for having us um, be your um, partners and um, co-partners in this uh, refugee hackathon. Because when we, from the Open Knowledge Austria, we are a um, we are an NGO, a gemeinnütziger Verein. When we heard about this hackathon, we immediately wanted to join and uh, the organizers were so nice as to let us jump aboard. And um, we thought, what project do we want to hack in, on this weekend? And since we are the open knowledge and we strive to bring forth a transparent uh, society, society that is uh, as well informed as possible, we thought we would hack this refugee crisis with uh, open data, with our motto open data for open minds, in our project, in our ongoing project, good deeds for good data, gute Taten für gute Daten, we um, aim to free data that is of public interest and analyze it and visualize it as to contribute to a more informed uh, public discussion, because in this refugee refugee crisis especially, there's a lot of misinformation. There are some data, for example, from the uh, Innenministerium, that is in English the Ministry of Interior. Ministry of Interior. They, um, the information they provide is um, very, very scarce. And it's also interesting what data they leave out, but what they do publish, they publish in closed formats, in a PDF, that is hard to find if you don't know where to look, and impossible to reuse, uh, as in that it's not machine readable. And so we thought um, we'd invite you to join our, um, our idea, our quest, in freeing data, making it accessible, analyzing it, visualizing it, as to contribute to a more informed discussion of the refugee crisis that also looks at the bigger picture, and not just based on gut feeling or misconceptions or prejudices that some people have. And what did we do? We uh, freed some data, meaning as made it open and machine readable, and visualized it with some very uh, cool data visualization tools. I freed my first data set this weekend as did Dominic from our team. That was very exciting. And Matthias is gonna uh, show us what uh, such an interactive visualization looks like and what it can tell you. Yeah, my, my laptop is a bit tired after uh, two intensive days of uh, hacking. But um, so what we did as a collective effort is we took uh, the data that the Ministry of Interior publishes in monthly reports in PDF files that don't allow you to get the bigger picture. And so we uh, freed data about uh, young people who are coming to Austria and requesting asylum uh, because they are especially vulnerable. And here you see the data about all the asylum applications from January to the end of August 2015. Um, I think in total it's 44,000 at this point. Um, there's always a delay, unfortunately, so the Ministry of Interior then they selectively give out more current data to journalists, but you never get the full picture. Um, so this is until the end of August. Um, and then if you look at, so basically if you look at all the, the overall number, you see most people are from Syria, 13,000, then 10,500 almost from Afghanistan. The picture is very different when you look at young people. So when you look at teenagers, people 14 to 18, um, you see that there's 600 from Syria, but there's 3,500 from Afghanistan. So you see that a lot of young people are making their way uh, to Austria um, on their own in, in many cases, presumably. And then we, we look at children. So children from zero to 14 years. Um, again, we see there's a lot more people from Afghanistan, also a lot of young uh, children from Iraq coming. Uh, a bunch of, uh, of them without uh, citizenship or no proof of their citizenship, Staatenlos. Um, and then again, uh, a lot of uh, people from, young people from Syria. Um, another 
kind of this is again this is a, I guess another way of how we try to visualize the, the overall um, asylum applications um, what, what we tried with this is a, an open source tool called data wrapper so here we try to um, have some filters in them as well so that people can in, uh, engage with the data a little bit. Um, we also put all the data on GitHub so that um, people can actually download them as spreadsheets and, and use the data for um, other purposes. So you could click on this and get the data or you could click here and get the source. Okay. There's something else we did and uh, the next thing I'd invite Felix uh, who did this to come up to the stage and maybe say a few words well it shows how many uh, people seek for asylum, asylum from the different countries in all the other countries from the world. But yeah, it's a bit false, the data, because... Don't say that. Okay, yes. they, it isn't false, the data. <laughs> <laughs> you see on the width of the flows how many people are there. If the flows are smaller, less people seek asylum from that country and if they are bigger, more people seek asylum. And this is the data from the year 2014. But there's also the data until the year 2000 from UNHCR. And every year could be displayed. Exactly. Um, what you did was to take the data that was provided by the UNHCR that was already in a kind of an open format, but you um, used your JavaScript skills and made the data so as that you could make this awesome flowchart to visualize it. Well, thanks. And, and here you get a tiny sense, this is Austria here. Um, you see how few people uh, actually, or fairly few people in 2014 came to Austria compared to a lot of the other very big refugee streams that we see around the world. So, this, this type of visualization can hopefully give you a sense, or can give all of us a sense of how small the challenge is that we're talking about right now in Austria compared to the overall issue of uh, people who have to flee their own country and request asylum somewhere else. Yeah, from one big picture to another big picture, um, Thomas looked at the UN Comtrade database. Exactly, yeah. Um, so the UN Comtrade database is a database obviously uh, published by the UN. UN about all the international trade in the world, reaching back uh, a few decades even. And so they are already very great at publishing it. They um, don't provide the raw data exactly, but an API for accessing it in many different ways. And what I did um, was provide a um, Java package for easily, ex for easily access accessing it in the program. So other people could uh, use the package to, um, to play with the data uh, in a much easier way than um, just via, via a REST API. So um, there is not not much of a um, not much graphics to show. I mean, at the UN country the website, they already have um, some uh, graphics for the data. Um, but yeah, this is more a stepping stone for others to better work with this um, huge set of data and um, do their own uh, analysis on that. Thank you. Yeah, Thomas published his Java package on GitHub also. You can see that here. This is github.com slash okfm80. This is where we store all our, uh, all our output of this weekend, as well as in our blog. But I'm going to give this microphone to you. No. Yeah, this is another example of the data that we freed from the traffickers. 
Schlepperstatistik. Uh, and uh, this is not the interactive version because I embedded it in the PDF presentation. <laughs> but uh, you can also find that data on GitHub, and it was Dominic who freed that data. Yeah. And it's, it's really not that hard to free data and to visualize it with the tools that we provided. And uh, one of our project's goals is also to make it more easy for people to participate in the whole open data discussion and to not be afraid of touching data, working with data, because it is something that's going to be relevant in the future, even more so than it is today. And that's why also one of our team members, Julian, he couldn't be here today, but his um, output for the weekend was to write tutorials on our blog, how to free data, how to publish it, how to visualize it in really easy steps, so that even people um, yeah, like me who are not coders, but who touch it this weekend for the first time, can make awesome visualizations, but cannot pronounce the word. <laughs> but, there you go. So, a couple more, sorry. <laughs> we have a couple more. So, as I said on, on the pitch on Friday, arms trades and arms exports are a big issue. And we managed to scrape the EU arms export data for the year 2013. We're working on previous years. So, this is um, the volume of uh, EU arms exports. You see that Spain is the biggest exporter with uh, 7.8 billion in, 2000, uh, uh, in 2013, but Austria has more than a billion euros in arms uh, exports or goods that are used for armed conflict and need a permit to, to be exported. Um, and it's thus among the bigger exporters. So when we look at what Austria exports, um, it's mostly ground vehicles uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, and small arms. So, Glocks, uh, Steyr rifles, that kind of stuff. Uh, and so, Austria issued licenses of 388 million euros for exports in that year, and 207 Euro uh, million euros were actually exported. Here we have the basically, here you see the actual export, uh, 350 million euros in, uh, to the United States was the biggest one. Here you see the licenses that were awarded, so the biggest one was 2.2 billion uh, for exports to Australia, but then actually only a, a bit over 100 million euros were exported. Here's Kuwait, and then you have uh, a number of uh, countries. I mean, this is still a lot of money here. We're talking about uh, 100 million euros in, in exports. Um, here you have some countries that include, for example, Algeria, which is one of the countries that have most uh, many refugees coming to Austria. This is an interactive graphic, so you can play around and uh, filter um, as you can do with this one. Um, so here we show you, um, here we filtered out um, all the countries that Austria exports arms to. Um, and if you hover over it, you see uh, the, the number of licenses, the, uh, the value of the licenses, and the actual exports. And here we filtered um, just the, the exports to countries that had uh, the top 15, uh, basically the countries were the 15 countries with the most refugees applying, applying for asylum in Austria in 2014 and 15. Um, and here you see exports to Algeria, uh, India, um, again Algeria, different types, uh, ground vehicles, aircrafts or drones. Um, guns to India, and uh, we have exports to Bangl uh, Bangladesh, uh, Morocco, Russia. Um, these are all countries that uh, we have a lot of people coming from to apply for asylum. Um, here we just have, the, again, the biggest uh, export relations. Um, and you can filter here, you can say, I want to see for the whole of Europe. Um, you can see all countries that import stuff from Europe, United Arab Emirates, um, and the, uh, in the case of Austria, the biggest importer is uh, the United States uh, when we look at small caliber weapons, so guns and uh, rifles. Very quick, the last one, this is the aid data that we freed. 
So this is, uh, these are eight projects that Austria funded over the past four years. Um, in which countries, so here we see there's a little bit of money going to Syria, two billion, uh, two million, sorry. These are projects with NGOs or governments. These are not uh, to UN agents, agencies, for example. Um, Jordan, Egypt, but these are really very uh, humble amounts, I, I would like to say. Um, and then you see that the countries that get most data are, are further away, are in Africa um, and uh, in Austria. Um, so there's a lot of development aid that actually never leaves the country, but that is used for purposes in Austria. And here you would see the organizations uh, that get these projects, uh, and the color codes indicates, uh, indicate where they are. So this cube, for example, this is done in Austria, this is Uganda, um, South Saharan Africa, so you can browse around and, and explore the data. Yeah, that's, uh, that's it from the, the, the Daten team. Um, you can find uh, all the data sets, or most of the data sets, are already on GitHub. We have a last slide for that. Show that okay. We have a last slide to say goodbye. Thank you for our patience. I think we could go on all night <laughs> with uh, our visualizations and all the information that you can so easily access when you look at those pictures instead of just looking at a, I don't know, 15 or 150 megabyte text file that is the ARMS export report. And uh, yeah, this is where you can find us at the okfn.at at our blog. That's where we're going to publish all the all the analysis. Analysis. You can find us on Twitter. Our hashtag is gute Daten. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you to our, our team. Thank you to the organizers. Thank you all for coming. Thanks.